First hole, and this hole is rather tight. Now for this length of hole, I would normally hit a driver, but there's a downslope, about 225 off the tee. So I'm hoping to catch that with the three wood. Well, we've had five inches of rain recently, so I am nowhere near that downslope. Plenty of wind around. So I might have to reassess and start hitting driver down here, even though it is a bit tight. Flag is back left because of the rain. I'm just going for the middle of the green here. And that just got blown right across the hole. Gonna have to make some more adjustments for that wind. It is stronger than I thought. A very long lag here. Now, I know everybody likes practicing their long game, but you have to practice the scoring end too. You really do need to learn how to get inside four feet, whether it be a long putt, or a long chip and run. And it's just practice. It's going out on the course in the evening and picking a long putt and just repeating it and repeating it and repeating it. The second, my bogey hole. Now, there's a ditch across the fairway that demands that I hit a three wood. I suppose when I'm off the back tee and the fairway is this soft, I can hit driver. Yep, done it again. Surprising how a hole can get in your head sometimes, isn't it? Right, Big Horse Chestnut dominates the front right of this green. So I'm taking a club here that will go underneath it. That's the plan. Rather than clattering into the tree, have the ball duck down and go underneath. But I guess the ground is so soft it didn't do that. Long chip here. Let's see if I can get it up the green. This second green is full of optical illusions. Not too sure whether I misread it or whether it just followed the hollow ties there, but um, you can't hold them all, otherwise we'd be on the tour. Third hole, long par three. You can't miss left because it's much, much higher on the left. I always elect to take this on rather than try and run it in. It's a shot hole for me anyway, so even if I dunk it in the bunker, you know, I'm going to make a net par. Sat down lie. I'm going to play a bunker shot. Now the ground is soft. I can get my wedge into the ground, just as you would get a wedge into, uh, into the sand in a bunker. And this is how I'm going to play this. See, that's quite a big swing. You look at the size of that divot. That isn't fat, that is a bunker shot. That's long and shallow. Fourth, you can't see much from the tee, but I know what my line is. 
I can play my standard fade, so I'm really in my comfort zone here. This T-shot doesn't give me any problems. It's nice to hit your normal shape. However, it's gone nowhere. This wind must be really much stronger than I thought. And with the ground soft. I got a four iron, and I don't think I've ever hit a four iron. I'm aiming down the left here to allow for the little bit of left to right wind. Yep, knifed it off the back. No point practicing it now, mate. The ball's gone. Well, at least this is easier. This is an easier up and down for me. Should be able to make my bogey from this. Number five, this is an awkward tee shot because you've got to turn it over a little bit, but the wind being down and a little bit out of the right, there's absolutely no fear on this tee shot. Just allow the wind to help me uh, knock it down the fairway. Well, that's the third pull hook of the round. I'm staring down the throat of my fourth bogey on the trot. It would be very easy right now to pack up the camera, knob it round the rest of the golf course, shoot 89 or 90. This is where we've really got to dig deep. As the ground is soft and the wind is up, it's driver for me on this hole. Just want to hit a little fade and get it down the right side. That's a fraction too much, but I've seen the bounce. The ball's just fine. This isn't what I wanted. I'm sat down. I got 168. The club I want to hit is not going to get through this grass, so I'm settling for the front edge of the green. At the last moment, I think, let's hit the flyer. So I just shuffle my feet back about an inch. I'm going to get in behind this ball and under this ball and make it fly with no spin. And I get it absolutely perfect. Once you make 
practicing lagging, part of your weekly routine, you'll be surprised how many bombs you start to hold. Or just tap in. If you practice your four footers, then this is not a scary putt. And if you can lag, then that takes the pressure off your irons. You don't have to attack flags, you should leave alone. And that also feeds back to the driver, it takes the pressure off the driver. All if you practice four footers and you practice lagging. Number eight is a wide fairway, but even so, there's only a small window that allows you a straight shot past the tree on the left and past this big tree on the right. And you have to accept that. And you have to play shots that you don't really want to play. So this is a knee-high four iron, get it down somewhere near the 150 yard marker. Job done. I can't drive the ball like DJ or Rory. I'm not big enough. But I can do this. Anybody can do this. It's just practice. It's taking time out away from the range and repeating this over and over. How far do I take the club back? How far do I take it through to make it travel a certain distance? Anybody can do it. The hard part is accepting that sometimes you just aren't going to get up and down. You have to play sensibly and you have to make that bogey. You can't go aggressive, dunk it in the bunker and then head for a double. You've got to take the bogey, or perhaps a lucky putt, to make a par. <laughs> 